Hi, I'm Holly, and with my sister Heather, you're listening to Haunted Family Podcast, a weekly podcast about the paranormal, unsolved mysteries, and even true crime. And even. I will admit, when Holly told me this topic today, I was like, what? Well, I remember when it happened. Well, I mean, and I was remembering it just as a dog bite case. Right, but it was so much more. Yes. But we have so a special I... guest in the studio today. Yes, we do. Um, yes, Miss Sophie is in here to make sure that we do not slander her breed because well, it was not a she's heard though. rumors. I know, but in the news, if a dog bites somebody, it's a pit. I mean, it could be a fucking poodle, but the news will tell you that it is a pit, and it will be a snarling picture of this mean and vicious dog. Well, I will. I have been bit by two pit bulls in my life. One left a scar on my knee, and one was Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get bit by Sophie all the time because she is teething, and yeah. she likes to use your hand. But yeah. we uh, we have a really great vet, and so our vet gave us all kinds of really good tips and tricks for breaking that without um, ruining breaking, her. Yeah, without breaking her spirit. <laughs> Yeah, because um, basically, that's my take on it. You know, there is no, there's no bad breed. There's bad owners. And I mean, every time I've been bit by a dog, it's been my fault. Yeah. I I have misjudged the warnings that the dogs have gave off. But that is not always the case. Like our friend when we was growing up who was viciously attacked by our our neighbor's dog and almost died. And it was just, he was walking through the yard and the dog pulled the spike that he was chained to out of the ground and attacked him. And they were, honestly, they were horrible to this dog. It had hardly any socialization with people other than their immediate family or with other animals it had no interaction with other animals um the neighbors who bred dogs had a fenced in yard so all of their dogs when they were outside ran you know their yard but these people chained their dog up and when he misbehaved they would hit him with things um sometimes shovels Sometimes shovels. Uh, one time I, I saw them hit him with a two by four and they ruined him. They ruined this dog. Um, I remember one time, not long after we had moved in, I'd got a cat. It was a little calico kitten. Oh my God, this is still a traumatic experience for me. Oh, it was traumatic for me too. And I was just sitting there. I was playing with the cat in the yard. The cat was in my arms. And out of nowhere, this dog comes running up to me, grabs my cat out of my arms, and shreds it in front of me. Yeah, there is literally no stopping it. He shakes that cat. He was big. He was strong. He was, and it, honestly, it was not the dog's fault. No, they were awful to this dog. This dog had no chance because bad owners and i think that the dogs in this case that we're going to discuss bad owners i think they were ruined by bad owners well they were intentionally ruined that's the difference i think our neighbors didn't know any better i think that they were not equipped for a big powerful dog they they did not have a vet like i do that's like hey holly Here's some ways that you can deter your dog from possible negative behavior in the future. I mean, Sophie's little. She's 13 pounds. So behavior that she does now, that's not a problem for me. If she, When she gets to her full weight of 60 pounds... It's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. So... We want to stop, we want to stop bad behavior before it it gets out of control when she's big, which is what they should have done with our neighbors, but 
They did not. Instead, they reacted horribly, horribly wrong to the dogs. And in this case, yeah, and I well, in this Kefali case, that's exactly what they wanted. Story because of an incident she had at Rural King shortly after she got Sophie. And we're doing that ra- we're doing that rambly story thing that so many people complain about. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I promise that a lot of these backstories go along with our motivation for why we pick episodes. Right. Um, so I long story short of why I was in Rural King is that if you if you've got cats, I heard that you can use um, horse bedding pellets in place of litter and it does better at absorbing um, urine and it smells better and it's cheaper well I have a lot of cats and yeah they go in and out but it's winter and so they like to stay in the house so I'm cleaning out the litter boxes a lot more than usual so I thought hmm I'll give this a try well our tra- I only have tractor supply here and I couldn't find what I was looking for so Tractor Supply rarely ever has horse pellets. We tried to use them for um, bedding for some of the smaller coops for the chickens and rabbits. Couldn't find them. So I went to Rural King, which is about an hour away. And I took Sophie with me because she was a baby. Like she was a babier than she is now. She was like five pounds. You had just got her. You had her like a couple days. Yeah, just a couple days. So. I took her with me, and I was carrying her through the store, and Ernie stopped to look at guns, and the guy working the gun counter, you know, commented on her, and he said, oh, is is that a blue nose pit? And I said, yes. And he said, oh, I have a pit, and I was like, oh, well, that's really cool, Pit parents like to stick together. Like, um, my next door neighbors have a pit, and every time I'm outside, I have to snuggle their dog Layla. And when they see Sophie outside, you know, they come over and want to snuggle Sophie. It's just, that's just how we are. (laughs) Um, So I was like, oh, well, that's really cool. Let me see pictures. And so he pulled out his phone and he was like, oh, my dog's name is Reich. And I was like, really and he said um yeah do you know where i'm getting that from and so you know i'm thinking i'm pretty sure i know where you're getting this from and he said uh, and like ernie is completely oblivious to this whole thing and he's like what and the guy's like you know third rock hitler's army i was like yeah that's what i was thinking and they um I, I didn't really say anything else. I was just like, mm, I do not want to have this line of conversation. But he, he um, went on to make other comments that led Holly to believe that he probably was a little white supremacist. Ari- mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, Ernie was in the military, was in the Air Force for 11 years, and he has almost two complete sleeves. There's kind of really no rhyme or reason to him. But on one hand, he has a clover because, you know, he's Irish. And the guy made a comment about it. And like, oh, you know, where'd you get that tattoo? Like, you know, does it mean anything? And Ernie's like, well, yeah, you know, I'm Irish. And the guy's like, oh, well, that that wouldn't do well for you in prison because that would mean that you are Aryan Brotherhood. Ernie's like, well, um, I have made it 42 years without going to prison so the odds are pretty good that you know i'm not gonna have to worry about that um so yeah there's nothing sinister just you know i'm just irish and the guy was like oh okay i just took it the whole aryan brotherhood and him you know, naming his dog the Third Rock. I was like, this is just bad road. Bad, bad road. I honestly wanted to ask him where he lived so I could go kidnap his dog and then give Liberated. it a really good name. 
Yeah, but I mean, the picture of the dog, it did look like it was being well taken care of. It wasn't, it was sitting on the couch. It wasn't chained up or anything. But um, in our case today, a high ranking member of the Aryan Brotherhood decided that he was going to start a dog fight ring from prison. There's a lot of weird. I mean, by now you probably know we're talking about the Diane Whipple case. So I, I don't know. I think we need to talk a little bit about how one goes about starting a dog ring from prison. So this guy, Paul Cornfed Schneider, not to be confused with the actor Paul Schneider, Paul Cornfed Schneider decides he's very limited in what he can do. Because he is on basically locked down for 22 and a half hours a day. He, he originally got put in for armed robbery, but an attempted murder. But he's also racketeering and then a couple murders like once he got inside. So he has three life sentences at this yeah. point. Uh, he's never getting out. He's no, he's never getting out. And at, at the time of this case, he was never getting out. So he got his hands on some dog fancy magazines. Um, him and his roommate got into doing art, but you know you can't have art supplies in prison. So they would take magazines. And then, like, wet it in the toilet and use the, those pigments um, in their art creations. So, he was asking people for magazines and stuff. Well, um, his attorneys um, Robert Knoll and Marjorie Knoller. Right who became his lawyer in a weird twist of fate like they were doing they, work they practiced the... law out of a closet in their apartment now i don't know if like their closet was like one of those big kim kardashian walking closets like this that's the size of my whole house or if it was like the size of my closet which i can't walk in my closet i can barely fit my clothes in my closet but um yeah, yeah, I thought it was a little it's... weird. I don't know if I would trust a lawyer who's practicing out of their closet. Right, I mean, I maybe they he didn't know that we're... He's in prison for a life sentence. It's not like, you know, he knew they were practicing out of their closet, maybe. But anyway, they did a lot of pro bono work for other prisoners and for some guards and that's how they met corn fed and they liked him so much that they eventually adopted him when he was 39 years old and became his legal parents and became his legal parents now they said this was so that they could have a say like to sue the prison if anything happened to him or to have some say over his medical treatment. But as far as I know, like he didn't really have anything going on that. Yeah, I still think it's weird. It is very weird. And his family thought it was weird. I don't know of anybody that does not think it's weird. So anyway, if you're listening met, and you don't think it's weird, send us a message. Let us know. At yeah. Haunted Family Podcast at gmail.com. So anyway, Noel and Noller um, were his lawyers and became his parents. And they sent him these magazines. Where in the magazine he discovered a breed of dog. That is supposed to be... Um, extremely fierce the dog was actually bred to 
hold bulls down for slaughter. Um, and they take their mouth and they put it over their, the bull's mouth or ear or anything vulnerable to hold it. Um, they in, I don't know if it was in this magazine, but corn fed said that the dog, that these, this breed of dog, um, was referred to as man stoppers and tough enough to take out a pit bull. As a pit bull owner, I will tell you that treats do the same thing. Like if you have those, especially those hugs that are, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, stuff it goes crazy over those you want to have control over her just dangle a treat above her head yeah this this dog <laughs> is the it's the canary mastiff mastiff yeah pressa canarian mastiff it is although people usually just call them presses so that's what we're going to call them because that's easier than that whole other thing they're huge dogs. They are. And they require a lot of socialization and obedience training because they are, they're a working dog. Anybody who's ever read, owned working dogs will tell you, you know, you've got to work with them. You've got to, they've got to have good training. We grew up around Dobermans and, you know, was- we did. We always had a dopamine growing up. But, I mean, that's, that's one thing that my vet says is you have to tire them out because they can't be cooped up in an apartment and not be walked or ran or have mental stimulation because they just, they will go crazy. They can't. Like, my next door neighbors, um, Layla hates going outside when it's cold. So does Sophie, but she's still baby. They bought a treadmill for this dog so that she can run and burn her energy on a treadmill so that when she goes outside to pee, you know, she's just going outside to pee and then she's coming back in and they don't have to worry about her. Not burning uh, off her energy. Not burning off her energy, which I think that's the most hysterical thing is the thought of her on a treadmill. Press is... Presses tend to be aggressive to other dogs and highly suspicious of strangers. Yeah. Which is not a good combination if you are living in a enclosed area where they don't have... Also not a good combination when the dog weighs 100 pounds. Right. I mean, my na- my neighbor's dog weighs about 100 pounds, but but he is also like... He would let you kidnap him. The male presses weigh upwards 160 pounds and the females can weigh upwards 150 pounds these are huge dogs i don't even weigh 150 pounds they're beautiful though they are they are really really pretty and it sucks that these dogs were ruined so his goal was to start a kennel dog of war kennels breed the presses for attack purposes um either a dog fighting or to protect aryan brotherhood criminal activity or both so he had twenty three thousand dollars to spend that he got from somebody inside the prison one a malpractice suit and he got I don't know how he ended up with the money, but he ended up with the money. That might have been one of the kill. That might have been one of the people he murdered in prison. Possibly. I don't know. And none Um, of the notes I found um, stipulated how he got the money. So. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, or who it belonged. Yeah, I don't know. Um, He got Bane, the the male, and there were several females or three females really I think yeah um this is this is where it gets weird so he asked his sister if she would keep the dogs and you know have the kennel at her place 
And she said no. So, um, he was like, okay. So he talked to his cellmates. His cellmate was being visited by Mormon missionary. And the Mormon missionary guilted another Mormon female into keeping the dogs on her farm. She had a dog kennel too. Yeah. But not as not a fighting kennel. No, she just had dogs. She she kept the dogs and she started pressuring him Schneider, not his cellmate, but she started pressuring him to convert to being a Mormon and to marry her. And um, okay, I am always so surprised when people want to marry murderers and stuff in prison. I, I'm, I just don't know what, I just don't know what makes a person think, hmm, you know what would make a really good partner in life? How about this person that's in prison for murder? Who's never going to get out. Who's never going to get out. I mean, like the people who threw themselves at Ted Bundy. What the fuck? Remember, he got married in prison. I know. Or the people who threw themselves at Charles Manson. Um, Richard Ramirez. The people who I are... mean, this is... Yeah, this is not somebody who there is a possibility that they're in prison wrongfully convicted. A lot of his crimes happened in prison. A lot of his murders happened in prison. So it's not like this guy's wrongfully convicted of something. So I, I don't understand that. But he refused. Um, she got mad and so stopped sending him pictures of the dogs. But this is where you know, I mean, you knew his intention was, I'm going to start a dog fighting ring. But this is where the intention is like really hits home to you. Um, Janet Combs that was the name of the, the poor Mormon who is now living in oh my god my brain just stopped working. Oh. Witness protection. She's in witness protection. Well I mean yeah I, you don't want to mess with the Aryan Brotherhood. No. No. You, I don't want to mess with anybody that might come kill me. Um but which is why would you want to marry that though <laughs> anyway so she sent him a picture of Bane curled up with a cat and he got mad at her and said that she was made she was turning him into a wuss <sighs> see here's the first sign that shit's about to go bad you know what my dog curls up with the cats all the time I mean, it better. The, cow, the cats outnumber the dogs. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I just, I, I hate people. And you had a couple of cats, I swear, are meaner than any dog I've ever met. That's true, too. <sighs> so, Schneider, since he's not getting pictures and updates about the dogs, he decides that he's going to contact his lawyers and have them step in and take control over the dogs and find a home for them not a nice loving home like you would think but homes for them that he will raise them the way he wants them raised well while on this four acre farm with janet combs she's got bane separated from everybody else and he is Yes. Staked out outside. Towards the back of her farm. Away from animals and people. Anything. Yeah. Not good. Not good people. Remember this dog needs socialization. It needs to be around other dogs. It needs to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 
so a vet came before they came and transported the dogs away and the vet said i would not trust any of these dogs in a home and you know i mean that's coming from a vet he's already seeing signs that these dogs are not socialized and that they're aggressive so uh nolan Nolan. I, tr- I trust my vet's opinion on yeah i do too i i think that we have a really good vet and you know if he says i think you should be doing this holly i'm gonna do it because you know what i didn't go to vet school so i'm gonna i'm gonna trust the doctor yeah well i mean i know like one of the vets in the office is actually younger than me I still trust her explicitly. Whatever she says. Because, you know, she's the one who's in massive amount of debt for school. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I am too, but just for a different. There was four puppies, three girls, and Bane. One of the girls' names was Hera. She was about 100 pounds. I don't know the names of any of the others, but... They don't matter. All the... They don't matter because all the dogs were taken to family members of people that Schneider knew in prison. And as far as we know, that's the last we hear of those dogs. So, Noel and Noler take Hera because she has a heart condition. And they spent like $3,000 for her vetting. But Bane ends up with somebody else for a while. And that person neglects him even more. To the point that his ears are eaten away by flies. If you can imagine that. I mean, I just, I, I, my heart hurts so bad for these dogs. They don't have a chance. So, and it. Honestly, it just gets worse. So, Nolan Noller take Bane in. And they have no control over this dog. I mean, he is 150 pounds of muscle and anger. They have run-in after run-in with, mem- with other people in their um, apartment complex. They have a dog fight on the beach where Bane almost rips Noel's finger off trying to get to another dog. Yeah, in all they have what? Um like twelve or fourteen previous attacks. Yeah. Leading up to the incident on uh-huh. January twenty sixth, two thousand one. Yeah, but I don't, and it, I don't know, this, this next part is stomach turning to me. So, it turns out that Noel, Noller, and Schneider are writing pornographic letters back and forth to each other, like a big love triangle but I mean obviously they don't ever get to see each other in that way but it's just weird it's just weird but in one of the letters Nola refers to the dogs as her lick therapist so she is using the dogs for sexual purposes ew Ew. Yuck. Have I said that already? Ew. Ew. Yeah. Like, these people are messed up. Totally people I want for my lawyers. Oh, God. Not. I, I, I think, like, when I ever interview, like, anybody professional from now on, I'm going to be like, so do you do anything weird with your dogs? Because if so, I cannot hire you. And by weird with your dogs, I do not mean dress them up because Sophie is almost always in a pink sweater. So, 
Yeah, um, Anigo is currently. Um, well, I mean, I just pulled out Anigo Superman sweater to put on him. So. Yeah, I can't. I know I'm going to get to a point that I'm. Gonna, it's going to be hard to find clothes for Sophie because I can't find anything to fit Hank's little body. Like, Frenchies are the oddest shaped little potatoes ever, because they're they're stocky but they're short. So finding him clothes is super hard. Anyway, these so not only are they having a sexual conversation exchange with their adopted son and having weird sexual acts with the dogs which apparently there are pictures of that was introduced in court and I do not want to see those um, but this couple talked about the dogs to other people as if they were their kids and referred to them as their kids which I mean I refer to my dogs as my kids but I mean I do not go overboard in a you know I don't blur the line between this is my kid and my entire life revolves around thinking this dog is my kid you know what I'm saying like all of my animals are my babies they're all my children but you have I have children. A, I do and I also have other things going on in my life that you know it's not the dogs like this podcast like this podcast and my shops so i don't know it just it just seems weird all of that lead up to say we haven't even got to the crime yet so on january 26th actually on january the 11th they bane and hera were sitting by the elevator when Diane Whipple got off the elevator on her floor. And they scared the daylights out of her. I don't know what they did, but I mean, all I have to do is see two 150-pound dogs snarling at me, and I will probably wet myself, and I'm crazy about dogs. I am too, but I also know that within reason, it take it would take a amazing amount of strength to hold back that much muscle when it's intent on something. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, um, my neighbors, I mean, Layla's not anywhere near 100 pounds. And when they're walking her in the yard and she sees me and she wants to come say hi, they struggle if they're not expecting her to dart. Because when she sees me, it's like... <gasps> I like you and she comes running and if they're not prepared they jerk her a little bit and they're grown men and she's not a hundred pounds so but these people Nolan Noller they were assholes and they had an issue with their next door neighbor I don't know why I don't know if it's, you know, I, I've thought about this. She was blonde, so it's not like they were against her because she went against their Aryan Brotherhood. No, I mean, if uh, in all honesty, she was, she appeared to be the classic type for them. She was blonde. She was fit. She was from New England. Yeah, but but she was a lesbian she was and they hated her she lived with her same sex partner but See? it was also San Francisco and that's a really progressive town like I know, I know but see stories like this is another thing that makes me worry so much about Abby and Hannah oh they'll be fine I know cause you know Hannah's really scary <laughs> Hannah has an AR-15 and I would love to see somebody mess with them <laughs> Listen, Hannah is my girl. I, she can handle her sale. Yeah, now I and I mean this this was a different time. It was. Um not I never ever ever agree 
with discrimination of any kind and discrimination based on sexual orientation always pisses me off more than anything else just because I've seen I've seen that firsthand and it enrages me um but that's a topic for a different time anyway Nolan Noller complete assholes and they hated Diane Whipple and I think they took delight in tormenting using her the dogs to terrify her yeah. yeah well on this day um Noller's story is Noel was out of town and Bane started whimpering needing to go use the bathroom so she took him out on a leash up to the roof where he would use the bathroom it was just one floor up and then she would bring him back down um as they were coming back down Diane Whipple was getting off the elevator with her groceries and she got to her door when Bane saw her and broke loose and ran to her. Noller tried to get her to go in her door, which was already open, but she wouldn't go. And she attempted to shove her in, but that's when the dog lunged for her throat. Now, that story just sounds like a big pile of BS to me. Yeah. Noller then claims that she tried kicking a neighbor's door to get a neighbor's attention to come help. Yeah. And then she tried to physically block the dog from Whipple. From, uh, and she was lucky to be alive. Now, Schneider tells a whole different story. He said that Diane Whipple gets off the elevator and Um, Noller has Bane and that she tells uh, Diane to shut her door so that she could take the dog out and Diane says I'm not ready to shut my door yet fuck you they argue and Noller turns the dog loose on her now I'm going to tell you that I've had lots of dogs in my life and they do not react well to arguments like dogs feed off your emotions um, they know when you're upset they and they sense when there's tension and they will literally fight for you my my shih tzu my male shih tzu if he even thinks like me and my boyfriend cannot even play fight because it upsets him because he views that as a real fight and you know, he wants to protect mommy. Yeah. So he doesn't, he doesn't bite, but I mean, it, he gets visibly upset and we have to, you know, stop what we're doing and pet him and reassure him that we wasn't, we wasn't fighting. Yeah. Because, you know, dogs are perceptive about things like that. So she used these dogs as a weapon to get back at her neighbor that she hated. 77 bite wounds. Diane Whipple literally bled out. And they actually, and they, at trial, they could only positively link Bane to her attack. Right. But even though they they had, but um, pieces of Diane Whipple's clothing was found in Hera's feces. Right. So I mean, to me, that is pretty positive evidence that Hera was involved, at least in some capacity. More than likely, she also was a biter too. Um. The only parts of her body that was not bitten was her scalp and her feet. All of her clothes were ripped off of her by the dogs. And this lasted 
20 minutes. There was blood streaked on the walls down the hall. And several different neighbors called 911. Um, one neighbor was trying to see out her window, but she or out her peephole, but she really couldn't and I get a good view of it. Absolutely, do do not blame her neighbors for not going out. I don't either. At least they called. They didn't ignore the situation. One neighbor called and said he thought somebody was being raped because he he didn't know what was going on either. He was just going by something violent is happening. I just can't imagine it lasting for 20 minutes. Um, Nolan Oler said that the dogs were not trained to be mean. but They might not have been trained to be mean, but they were not... They were not properly trained. They were not properly socialized. They were not properly cared for. And I think that that contributed to them having a really terrible mental state well but yes you're correct but in their house police found a training book titled man stopper a training manual to teach how to nurture viciousness so i mean that's some light reading for somebody who's not training their dog to be mean but how much training can you do it in a tiny apartment Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure maybe they just took the dog somewhere to train them. I mean, maybe you know, these dogs also chained up for God knows how long when they were on that farm. And who knows what happened to Bane before they got him. I mean, these dogs were just messed up by these people. But, you know, I mean, I don't know that there would be hope for Bane. I don't. And But, I mean, Hera probably could have been rehabbed. Some of the dogs, some of the fighting dogs from Michael Vick's uh, fighting ring has been rehabbed to be therapy dogs. So, anything is possible. Both of them, Nolan Noller, was sentenced to four years on involuntary manslaughter. But their probation requirements is what was weird to me. Because, I mean, they're both out now. They both have been out for a long time. They're not allowed to contact Schneider, which, okay, I understand that. They're not allowed to ever own dogs. Okay, I understand that. Completely agree with that. They're not allowed to contact each other. But, Okay. I mean, I just found that weird because they were a married couple. I wonder what the judge's reasoning behind that was. I don't know. But both of them lost their law license in 2007. So I don't even know what they're doing now. Not training dogs. Hopefully. Thank God. Well, I mean, I hope at least if if their probation officer does anything, I hope to God it's that he's checking up to make sure they don't own dogs because those people do not need dogs. Yeah, like not even a chihuahua. Well, I think chihuahuas are more vicious than anything. <laughs> we jokingly refer to June as baby shark <laughs> because she destroys everything. She's destroyed a a bed pillow <laughs> she ate a hole in a quilt like a handmade quilt yeah she has destroyed toys that are literally 15 years old <laughs> yeah have you tried the um the red kong that you put like treats in she ate it oh because Sophie loves hers. Yeah, she <laughs> ate it. It lasted three hours. Oh. <laughs> See, people, proof that, and I am being sarcastic and air quoting here, pits and their locking jaw is no match for a chihuahua. <laughs> um, the, 
Yeah. Um, finally, we ended up getting like bones for her. And that has helped so much. Well, that's good. Yeah. She chews on it and she wears herself out with that. And then she doesn't have enough energy at night to want to stay up and chew on things that she shouldn't have. Or, you know, she doesn't bring a toy into the living room and, you know, it'd be decapitated. We actually, as she was bringing toys in, because we could always tell when a toy was getting ready to die, because she would start getting really lovey with it. Oh, no. Yeah, and if, when we saw her getting really lovey with the toy that we wanted to keep, we'd take it from her and put it on the toy, <laughs> the shelf of toys we want to save. <laughs> <laughs> like, the little snowball toys that Nigo really loves, and some, you know, toys that Scarlet really loved before she passed, and, you know, things like that. We just, we'd put them up. <laughs> But yeah, I, you know, when I told Heather that I got a pit, I think she thought I was insane. But after meeting Sophie, isn't she the sweetest thing she ever? She is, but I still think you're insane because you have so many dogs. I don't, I do not have so many dogs. And two of my dogs, like, are, like, massive senior dogs. Like, I hardly even know that I have them. <laughs> Okay, but she is going to be a massive dog. She she's she's going to be sixty or seventy pounds. With big dogs come big responsibilities. I know, and I. But I mean, uh, with any dog comes big responsibilities. And but I have a fenced-in backyard. I have, you know, I'm I'm home a lot. You know, it's not like. It's not like I'm leaving her all day long and then, you know, she doesn't have, you know, it's not, I'm, I'm home a lot. So she's, she's got interaction. She's got socialization. There are people and kids in and out all the time. So, I mean, this is probably the most social dog like ever. Yeah. Um, I, I just... It kills me that there are so many irresponsible pet owners. But this goes beyond irresponsible. This was intentional. Yeah. They sought out to make these dogs mean. That was the goal. I mean, if if I can say anything positive, and it's a very big stretch to even say this because Diane should have never lost her life. Ever. These people should have never... Who the hell sold dogs to somebody in prison is like... They should have their dogs confiscated. And I know I I left out that part, but um, he sought out several different breeders who turned him down because he was in prison. And they... they Clearly raised a big red flag for him. Right. But but a certain dog breeder uh, in the Midwest, is all I know, sold him the dogs. So that that breeder should have his license. Not, they, he's probably not licensed. But he should have all of his dogs taken from him. That's very irresponsible. Yeah. Um, but at, Diane, at least- Diane Whipple's um, domestic partner, Sharon Smith sued Noller and Noel for civil damages and she won. She won good for her. 1.5 million dollars and she donated a chunk of the money to St. Mary's College lacrosse team, which is where um oh, Diane, Diane Whipple was the lacrosse coach. Yes. Um that was really nice. And I don't know if we mentioned this but both Bane and Hera were put down. Yeah, Bane. Okay, guys, listen to this. They tried to tranquilize Bane. He was lo- when the animal control got there. He was locked in their bathroom, covered and in blood. Covered in Diane's blood. 
And so they, op- they tried to open the door and they shot him with tranquilizers. And he would not go down. So they had to to get those poles that you know you see uh, where you can you loop it over their head but like you're not touching the dog because it's on these poles and they had two of those one on each side and they walked the dog out to the animal control van but they ended up having to just put him down right then he was that they, wild they couldn't they could not control him they could not control him enough to get him in the animal control van right and they kept Hera for a while and she they I guess separated her from from the other dogs but they ultimately had to put her down too so two dogs ruined and killed because One an irresponsible completely lost their life yeah, because an irresponsible breeder made the decision to sell dogs to somebody who was in prison who he had to have known had ill intentions had to have known yeah, oh I'm sure that they had to know that and um, my research showed that the that speaking of irresponsible breeding is that in the United States you do n- you hardly ever get pure presses that they are oftentimes bred with other breeds so you'll have like a press a Great Dane mix to make it bigger um, or you'll have a press a Mastiff well, breed I mean, to make it more muscular or you'll have a press of pit mix. I had to make a friend really who's, adorable. I had a friend who had a um, I think it was an English Mastiff. And that dog was huge. I mean, he was a big old baby, but he was huge. I mean, if you yeah. if you scratch this one spot behind his ear, like the dog completely went to jello. Okay, miss, what kind of dog was it? Uh, English Mastiff. Oh. Yeah. Um, I was at... I started to say where I was actually at. Ah, uh, I went to do a visit for my actual job that I get paid at on Friday. <laughs> and this lady was, show, I was showing her pictures of my dog, and she showed me pictures of her dog. Oh, my God, it was gorgeous. It was a... It was an English Mastiff... Um, and a great Pyrenees mix. It was a ginormous cloud. I mean, like, seriously, this was the biggest, fluffiest dog that I've ever seen in my life. It was so adorable. I mean, I would hate to have to feed that dog, but it was so adorable. I just pulled up the Wikipedia page for the um, Pressa. Do you know that um, importation and sale is illegal in Australia and New Zealand? I did not know that. Yeah. Well, that's according to the Wikipedia. So take that for what it's worth. Hmm. Yeah. But... I mean, I hate to say, but if the, if that crime had happened, like now with the war on pits, I, I swear to you that there would be news people falsely reporting that the dogs were pits instead of presses. Which then, when they were like, "Oh, it's 150 pounds," the hell, <laughs> like um, pits don't get that big. At least not purebred ones. No, not purebred ones. <laughs> course you know i mean the the you say pit and there's like six different breeds that people call you know a pit bull so take your pick on which actual breed you're talking about but yeah anyway that was my 
soapbox about be responsible breeding and be responsible pet owners and nobody has to die I guess Bane and Hera died but at least at least Bane and Hera didn't have to be a part of a dog fighting ring and no other dogs had to get ruined in that process too I guess I mean you know if we're looking at some kind of happy you know at least this, this story I don't really think there's many happies you know it's just it's a sucky story from start to finish and I think that they should have gotten more than four years but that's just me I think so too but I was actually surprised that they were charged with murder. Well, I mean, they were charged with her death. Right. I, I mean, I'm surprised also. But I think that it should have happened. You know, if you are a dog owner. You are responsible for the actions your dog takes. Exactly. You know, if if Sophie gets out and attacks, you know, the UPS guy or the mailman or you know somebody just randomly come into my door that's not meaning me any harm I should be held responsible because she's mine I mean not only that but you are responsible for what your dog does if your dog damages the property of someone else you are responsible for that um we had an incident a few years ago um, where our neighbor had a hu- had a husky dog, husky breed, not the dog was fat, <laughs> <laughs> tied to a tree with a clothesline, <sighs> and the inevitable happened: the dog broke loose. The dog came over here to our little farm. And chewed through hardware cloth and killed 18 chickens. Not cool. No. And, you know, when the, when the cop showed up that night, the cop had to explain to him that you are responsible for the fact that your dog has just destroyed their property. Of course, he never paid up and... We didn't feel like taking him to court over it, but we could have very easily because we had, you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of money tied up in those chickens and their enclosure. Had some of the cutest little speckled Sussex chickens, too. Yeah. I've not been able to get that breed again. I just, every time I see them, I'm just like, my babies. Because they, they were just about ready to go in with the rest of my flock. This was my grow out pen. I raise them in the house until they're ready to go outside. And then they go into a grow out pen outside until they're ready to be moved in with the rest of my flock. I just get so... I don't know. I just... I mean, I love animals. I love all animals. And I have such anxiety about... About any animal having any pain. You know, like... I worry about those chickens in their final moments. I worry about the bunnies in my yard that, you know, Wesley tries to eat. I just... I worry... I don't know. I just... I worry about all all the animals I don't want anything bad to happen to any of them okay I need something happy do we have some stupid criminal I am checking that right okay I have one I actually sent this to a friend of mine who's a cop earlier this week this story actually begins way back in May of 2018 when Ashley Keister I think that's her, how you pronounce her last name. Started harassing a police officer. Okay. She started sending him drawings and calling 911 to try to talk to him. 
Ah, oh, that's not good. Um, they made her sign a piece of paper saying that she wouldn't contact him because he was. She was sending him like twenty messages a day. But that didn't work because just hours after that, she was calling nine one one to try to get him to talk to her. Okay, nine one one is for emergency purposes only, guys. It's not a dating site. Yeah. Well, at around two forty-five a.m., she went to the police station looking for him. And when he wasn't there, she took a, um, ashtray. It says cigarette butt holder, but I'm, I'm thinking ashtray. Okay. It's an ashtray. And I, in my mind, it's one of those heavy old glass ones. And she uses it to break out the front window. Okay. She entered the building and started rummaging through filing cabinets um, in the you know the front of the building. But she couldn't actually access the rest of the building because yeah, they were smart enough to lock the door. Good. Yeah. Always lock your door. Um, when they tried to arrest her, um, she swung at officers. It actually took two people to take her into custody. So they have, the town has decided that they're going to definitely beef up security, as they said. Around all other municipal buildings, fire, EMS, and police to make sure that people like this can't just break in and get to our first responders. <sighs> Keister is uh, was arrested and faced multiple charges, including aggravated assault, harassment, and criminal mischief. So, girls, I know there's like some sort of mystique about dating a cop. There shouldn't be. I used to work for a sheriff's office. And I can tell you that there's absolutely nothing special about them. I mean, I mean, except for the fact that they have handcuffs. But you can buy your own. I have handcuffs too, and I'm not a cop. No, I mean, when when I worked for the sheriff's office, I would get harassed all the time by girls who would want me to try to set them up with guys I worked with. I mean, yeah. it would get it would get kind of scary. How even when your coworker wanted you to set you up with me, I was not going for that. True, but that was that was a role reversal. That was a cop trying to get me to <laughs> set him up with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, ladies, as a general rule, cops don't like harassment. What? Don't like I thought that's why they went into the job because they like to be harassed. <laughs> you would think they don't like people stalking them. It kind of makes them uncomfortable. So that is not how you attract a cop. So our takeaways from today. Don't be a dick pet owner. Don't buy dogs you can't handle. Don't buy dogs you can't handle. If you feel like maybe you can't handle your dog, I'm going to highly recommend dog training and... Um, like behavior training for your dogs. Yeah, good and effective dog training also involves training you. Right, like we've got a great place here in town. Um, that's actually right beside our friend's house. <laughs> that you know, when Sophie gets a little bit older, they only take dogs once they have completed all their shots. So when, um, when she's all up to date on all of her vaccines. I'm really thinking about enrolling me and her into puppy kindergarten. You know, she she's really good at sitting and she listens really well. But, you know, she's a puppy and she does puppy things. Yeah. Um, well, that's the show for tonight. I hope that our rambling kind of gave you a little insight about why we picked this topic. Our rambling is rarely ever just rambling. It really goes into our motivation for not just the topic at hand, but why we do the show in general. Yeah, but Heather really was like, okay, fine, we'll do this dog case, but whatever. But 
I'm see. I'm glad that you think and you realize that it's so much more than just woman in the hallway gets bit by dogs. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.